If you haven't gotten your copy of Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous, then head on over to Amazon right now. It could be on its way to your house or into your device before I'm done introing this next episode. I am really excited about today's featured conversation. Not only does it mark a pretty significant milestone for this little podcast, but it also is so refreshing to hear. At least it was a conversation I personally needed to participate in. But real quick though, before we keep going, (laughs) registration is open for the upcoming free masterclass I'm teaching titled How to Find Your Confidence Without Bullshitting Yourself. Like I said, the class is free, it's hosted online, and there will be a replay available for those of you who aren't in my time zone. I'm teaching the class because a lot of times I think people hear the words like find your confidence and it kind of implies this sense of like lying to yourself that you're just like, you know, talking through your teeth about how confident you are about yourself or about what you're doing. Um, And that's not the idea. That's not what bravery is. Bravery is not lying to yourself. (laughs) So if you're interested in this and knowing more about it, then go register yourself for the class by visiting emilyannpeterson.com forward slash workshops. And everyone who registers for the class will get the class replay links and some corresponding worksheets that go along with the class too. Again, emilyannpeterson.com com forward slash workshops and I will look forward to seeing you in class. Okay. So at the time of recording this episode, about 18 months had passed since we spoke to our first ever podcast guest. Both she and I have learned big, huge lessons about what it means to be brave as a musician and a performing songwriter. So in celebration of the book Bare Naked Bravery being published earlier this year, I wanted to touch back to the beginnings of the show and catch up with Naomi Weshira. I'm so excited about this. If you haven't heard her story or that first episode, I encourage you to do so. However, today's conversation won't lose you because we're talking about the courage of choosing silence, which applies to anyone, anywhere. Especially on the heels of a busy season of hustling, we need that rest and rejuvenation. Naomi and I spend today's conversation swimming through the waters of this silence. It's quite an appropriate conversation. We don't do it silently though, (laughs) but it is quite an appropriate conversation for me to have personally because while she's ramping down a busy season as a performing songwriter, I'm ramping up my season of speaking up and showing up as an author and a songwriter. And personally, I needed this reminder from her to intentionally build in the rest, build in the silence and the deep nourishment that your soul needs to do its real work in the world. Naomi needed this too. So it's perfect timing, as always. As with each of the guests on this show, Naomi is someone who inspires bravery in me personally. She was one of the first names I wrote down while brainstorming who I'd reach out to to research this book the book that is now published with the same name as this podcast, Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous. Side note, if you haven't purchased it yet, go do it. Go do it. All of the formats, including audiobook, are available on Amazon right now. And if you have already read it, what did you think? (laughs) Truly honest Amazon reviews would be really, really wonderful next steps for you. Amazon reviews, just like iTunes reviews, are how people will find this book and this podcast. And I know there are myriads of people out there who need to, one, listen to what Naomi and I talk about today, and two, who also need to hear the stories and the bravery building, the bravery building knowledge that is held within these pages of the book. So Amazon reviews are super awesome and the answer to all that, at least for today. So today's conversation is a perfect example of the nakedness required for big, bold actions and sometimes being still, pausing your movement, or just listening on a deeper level takes more bravery than keeping the hustle going. So I'd like you to take a deep breath and make space for a new level of listening. I give you Naomi Washira. You're listening to Bare Naked Bravery, a weekly podcast hosted by me, Emily Ann Peterson. 
As a singer-songwriter, author, teaching artist, and creative entrepreneur, I encounter some really fascinating stories. I'm on a mission to reveal the depth and width of bravery and its benefits to creatives like yourself. More than ever today, our world needs bravery, unique bravery, from everyone. This is the place where you find it. There is no script or censorship today because that's how these facets of bare naked bravery are in real life. So if you're listening with little ears nearby, please know that some episodes may contain mature language and subject matter. One of the easiest ways you can share bravery with the world is to send this episode to a friend or two. Send them an email, text, or tweet. Tag them in one of my Instagram posts. My handle is Emily Ann Pete. Or leave us a review on iTunes. It takes seconds and can be done from your phone right now. Again, we need more bravery in the world. So let's be brave together. Naomi, okay, so you're here. We were we were talking before we started recording. The last time you and I spoke, actually spoke, was during the last podcast that we recorded. Yes. Which was like, it must have been July of 2016. So here we are. It's the early part of 2018. A year and a half later, a lot happens in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So to catch you guys up to speed, Naomi joined us like in, I think it was like episode, was it the first episode or the first first episode? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. I'm so excited about this. So you were the first episode. We discussed some of your backstory, which basically kind of brought everybody up to speed on what you have been up to or what you had been up to up until that point. And we didn't even get to talk that much about all of the cool things that you were about ready to do. Yeah. So catch us up to speed over this last year and a half. What happened? Yeah. Like, what have you been up to? Yeah, absolutely. So I think after having that conversation, I had just started the process of recording a new album. And by the end of that year, which was in December, like that whole plan came crashing <laughs> and I needed to like re-strategize in terms of like the producer I was going to use and where I was going to record the album. So I spent, you know, and I think I already had, again, it was like the whole thing of just like listening to my gut. And I think my gut had already, was already aware of like the person I wanted to use and where I wanted to record. And I reached out to them and like, without hesitation, like they were willing to help me record the album. And so I did that. And and then I did a Kickstarter campaign in the November. Actually, yeah, I did a Kickstarter campaign to help fund the album. And uh, I was able to meet my, you know, my goal and above, you know, a little chunk of change on top of that. And that was really huge. Like that was encouraging because, you know, in the same year, and I don't know if I talked about this, but in in that same year, I had done a campaign that you know, that didn't go through or that didn't, was not successful. And so I had to learn how to kind of like pick myself up again and, and figure out like what's going to work, what's not going to work. And I was telling somebody the other day that crowdfunding is the most bravest thing I think I can fathom as a, as a small business owner, because you are regardless of whatever product or whatever project you're trying to fund, the question to the world is, do you value my idea? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that in itself, like I remember like that whole month of November, I did it from November 1st to December 1st. It was just like so ridiculously stressful because a part of it is like, I'd already done this before and it didn't work out. And I was like, oh my God, like I can't go through another, another fail. And if you've done crowdfunding, like, you know, sometimes it takes a while, at least for me, it takes a while for it to like really sink in and people don't start pledging until like, you know, you have like four or five days left. Well, from what I understand and experience wise from my own experience with this, like there's a surge right at the beginning. And then like, Mm -hmm. regardless of how long the campaign is basically like the first week there's a surge. And then the last week there's another surge. We have like two weeks in between of just like, what nobody. And then you kind of get tired. And like, I'm, I'm one of those people, like I've never been very good about asking for help or, you know, inviting people into my own process. Like, uh, like that's just the way I've always been. And so it gets exhausting to, because I'm forcing myself to do this, 
you know, to talk to people about my project and ask people to help me. And, you know, and whether it's like writing like individual emails to like a couple hundred people, it wears you out. And, and so I was really happy when, you know, all the funds finally came through and I could breathe for a bit, but I also knew that, you know, it was just a temporary sort of breathing space because, you know, I still, I still had to do like all the post album work and, and then get all the albums out to people and like, which that in itself is another just hard thing to do. Cause sometimes people don't respond and you have to keep hunting people down to be like, can you please respond so I can like get this album to you. And, but then on top of that, it's like me traveling. Like I, I sort of do everything by myself. And so it's like, I, I sort of had to do like, you know, the post fulfilling part in chunks because you know, I was traveling, I was going on tour and, and that kind of weighs on you. At least for me, it was weighing on me to, that I had all this stuff that I still needed to, to send out to people and fulfill like my promise. Yeah. And then, you know, did the album release and very, very successful. And, and then my daughter and I started traveling, you know, we started out with just doing like domestic tours, like in Washington and Oregon and California, and then did East coast. I think we did her and I, probably did about 12 or 13 states and just like me booking, you know, all the venues and, but also being very mindful of the fact that I'm not just traveling by myself. Like I'm traveling with my seven year old daughter. And so like, how do I make this worth her while also, you know? And so we did some fun stuff also like went to Disneyland, you know, surprise with the trip, like Disneyland did a lot of historical cause I homeschool also. So I, we try to do as many historical sites as we could as you know part of her learning experience and and then we did a month long in Europe and I played in like four different four or five different countries there and yeah so it's like I mean it it sounds like it's easy to kind of talk about them like in one sentence or whatever but like for me it's like I keep thinking of just like the work that it took and the stress and the countless prayers I had to make when you know, sometimes things would not work out the way I want, I wanted them to work out, but like, you know, foreign city or you're somewhere and like, you have a child and like, okay, God, like I need something. Cause you know, I'm in a bind right now. And well, I mean, talk about, cause it's one thing to tour abroad or travel abroad by yourself. Like mm-hmm. that's one thing, but to have a dependent with you, yes. that's a whole yes. other story because you're right. Like what happens when shit hits the fan and it's not just you it's also you have another mouth to feed or you also have another being's safety that you're in charge of so yeah like i remember uh one of the crazy stories was we're in italy in pescara and we like decided it was i had a friend who had come with us for like the 10 days that we were going to be in italy and she was just going to travel with us and help me out with with my daughter and that night we decided to go grab something to eat and I came back and the car was gone. And I was like, uh, wait. And, um, and my friend was like, maybe you parked it somewhere else. I'm like, no, I know where I parked the car. Anyway, long story short is the car had been towed. I had no idea, but I, I had my daughter mm. with me. I, it was just right before I, I was supposed to perform. And so it's like this whole thing of just like, okay, I have to put this aside. I also have to make sure that my daughter is okay. Like she's not freaking out, you know? And I did my show and then like completely fell apart after that. But also like having this faith, I was just like, this car is going to show up somehow. I don't know how, but I just have to have this faith that the car is, we're going to find it. And thankfully we did. It was, you know, we found out that it had been towed because the, like the, the parking sign was like in a place where I couldn't really see it very well. Mm -hmm. But it's like moments like that where it was just like, it's not just about me, but it's like my daughter is there and And it, you know, the question is always like how, you know, modeling of just like, what am I modeling to her? Like what happens when you're like in a very sticky situation? Like I'm not a big believer in like being stressful. Like it's all about like, okay, let's be calm and like, let's figure out like, how can we handle this? Whether it's like in small chunks until we can get, you know, find a solution to whatever is happening and so things like that. Like, you know, and when you accumulate all the different you know, every day is different and every city and every town and every place you go to, there's always something that's different about your experience. And when, you, when, when that's happening, it's like, you don't really have time to like unpack, like what's, what's going on? Like how, how did I handle this? Whatever. You just 
go, 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 go. And so by the end, the end of the year, I was just mentally, emotionally, like physically, I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Like this was great, but <laughs> I'm, I'm completely exhausted. I'm curious about this because when you have put everything into go, 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 and then you get to that point of realizing that you don't have anything, like you're exhausted, (laughs) you don't have anything else to give. There's for me, like when I've been in those situations, it's, I've had to encounter like facing my own internal sense of failure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. How did that pan out for you? When I returned and, and I remember, I think that was like the first, there was like a sense of discouragement of just like, I was like, oh my, I, I can't give anything. I can't, I can't, there's nothing else that's left for me to give to anybody. And in a weird way, like, I don't even know why, but it's like in a weird way, I felt like, oh my God, like I'm letting myself down by just having this thought of like, I can't give anything to anyone. Because I think for me, like what I do, my calling is like very much tied to giving to other people. And like the music that I create is about, giving something to somebody else. And so when I'm unable to do that, it just feels like, well, I've just failed at the one thing that I'm really good at. And, and so I really struggled. Like it took me, and I I think that's why like off record, like I said, that it took me a while to, to finally get to the place of saying, I actually need to rest. It's actually a good thing for me to just stop and just be okay with like, this is a necessary part of the journey. Like you don't have to constantly just be giving, giving, giving. But yeah, but it took me like almost a whole month of just wrestling with, actually not two months because we, we got back from Europe in, in, in November and just November and December, like I was just going just back and forth and I was beating myself up and just this feeling of like, maybe I hadn't done enough and like these, you know, I should still, I need to do more. Yeah. Why do you think the rest is a necessary part of movement because i think as a creator i feel like you have to be able to get to this this place where you've replenished yourself enough and i find at least for me what i've learned is like when i perform it's like i'm giving and i might be able to get something in return from the audience but it's it's not very often because it's like there's a very short amount of time between you know when you do a concert you're done you sign cds and even like those conversations they might be great but they're not they're not the kinds that feed you. Cause like, you're still like in performance mode. It's like, as a person, I'm not really absorbing what's, you know, what's actually happening. And so when you do that for, you know, a good six months, it's like, to me, I feel like I feel completely depleted. I've given everything. And so from, and, and for me, like being an introvert, I need to have like that silence and that like away from everything. So I can sort of like build myself up again and right. like, ins- like be inspired by just the natural things of life and you know not constantly because I think there's also like the the trick of you know being a performer you're always getting attention from people and like and that feeds you to you know but I think it kind of feeds my ego more than anything <laughs> like, how great you are and I'm like oh great like you know but it, it doesn't necessarily like feed like the uh, I don't know what word to use like your soul I guess is is probably what I would kind of say like it doesn't really feed your soul it kind of more feeds your ego of like okay like I'm good like I'm good I know I'm good and but your soul is like a whole nother thing and like to me like that's where the inspiration comes from I fully resonate with that especially the the notion that like right after the performance you're still in performance mode yeah. whether you want to be or not or whether you should be or not is a diff- that's a different question but for me when I get off stage it's like holding, like, it's like your muscles have that muscle memory. And so if you practice the performance muscles so much, it takes a little bit of time to release those performance muscles and to give into the receiving aspect of things rather than give, 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 especially if you're like me, like an introvert. So that makes complete sense that the post con the post concert, post performance, congratulations and hugs and all that stuff. Those are still more or feel like nourish our souls in a giving way, not in a receiving way. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's, it becomes like, that becomes the affirmation of like, you've given me something, but just because somebody says something doesn't mean 
that you're actually getting it something in return or like at least something of equal. I don't know. Like I, I'm trying to find like the right words, but no, I mean, it's like an exchange of, it's an exchange of value and yeah. And sometimes that happens with money, right? Sometimes that happens with words or other ways that you share appreciation or exchange value with someone. But when you're, when you are a performer who is nourished by silence and nourished by rest and solitude, it still is not as like receiving public congratulations and applause. That is not as nourishing as sitting and spending time with somebody or sitting and having just a really in-depth conversation with someone. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And then, yeah, uh, you're totally right on that. Cause I think it's like those conversations, you know, after the performance, they, they're not necessarily very deep because like, you don't really have the time to go very deep. And, and it's not until like you're able to sit with a, with a person like, and actually like, sort of like, to me, it's like conversations is like peeling an onion. It's like a layer after layer after layer. And, you know, you don't right. get that after performances. Like it's, it's very, I have two seconds or I have two minutes and I want to share something with you. And I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. But like, but it's also still missing something. Like I'm honored like to, to be part of like somebody else's process that way. Right. But I think it's also very essential for me to find a way to like fill myself back up again and like, and replenish, you know, what I've been away. And, and I find, and so, yeah, so that, that's why like the need for silence is really, really essential. This is somewhat off the wall, but it's popped up on my news feed the other day on Facebook. Some, one of these uh, make a wish kids was wishing to see Katy Perry. And she was just like all about it. This little kid. Uh, and I, i love Katy Perry. I think she's so fun doing really fun work. And, but watching her watching Katy Perry, visit and spend time with this child who like all she wanted to do, like her, you know, last wish on earth was to see Katy Perry. I mean, what a responsibility yeah, <laughs> as an artist. And secondly, yeah, that kid wanted to just meet Katy Perry, but that was a moment where Katy Perry was giving everything to that child. And I could see like, she's a pro Katy is, she's a pro. She knows exactly what she was doing. And but the whole thing was a performance and not in a bad way, not in a fake way necessarily. It was just very clear to me that, you know, she was fully made up. Like she was the stage version of Katy Perry, not the I'm wearing sweats and I'm sitting at home with Nugget the dog. You know, like, so I, I think that's just totally, totally legit. And, and I think it's, it's a really timely conversation because though you are in a rest period, I am coming out of a creation, a, re a rest and a creation yeah. period. And I'm going to be doing the out there stuff. So this is such a good reminder for me to build that rest into the touring process and into the exposure and the visibility. Yeah. I'm curious, like, what is that? Like, what does that look like for you coming out, coming out of the rest into the go mode, like what, like, how does that, what does that look like for you? Well, it looks like for me doing more concerts than sitting at home and writing yeah. a book. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to some degree cabin fever. Like I'm, I feel like I've done enough creating it's now it's time to like share. And I think that's a healthy, just like you came back from tour and was like, Oh, I need to rest. That choice feels good. After I resolve the choice within myself, the choice feels really good and nourishing well, on the other side of things, like you can rest and rest and rest or create and create and create and never release it all. And it feels just as stuck and just as toxic on, honestly, like if you had kept go, 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 going, that would have been just as toxic as me sitting at home, just writing and creating and writing and creating and writing and creating without ever letting it out into the world. And so I feel like it's just the physical version of that process. Like, yes, I push publish on line or you for a podcast episode or for a song out to patrons or for a book out on Amazon, but there's also a physical act of 
publishing or being public about what you have to give. And I think that's just the natural next step. It's like the ins and the outs of taking a breath. You have to like drop your stomach muscles and make space for the air. Mm, yeah. And then when you've run out, when you've, when the oxygen has done with its job, then you contract your muscles to push it out and then repeat the process again. So I would love to, for me, I would love to create a sustainable pattern of that in and out, in and out. Like, yeah, I, cause that sustainability is so important to me. And I think it's a somewhat of an experiment for everyone too. Cause yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Cause I think like, this is like the first time I'm like intentionally like creating an intention of rest and silence and, you know, kind of going within. So like there's a part of me that's like, I'm still figuring things out as I go. Like some days I'm like, what am I doing again? You know? And, and to have to kind of keep reminding myself, like, this is, this is the plan. This is what we're kind of thinking of. And every day it's like something comes up and I'm like, Oh, that'd be interesting if I could do this or if I could do that. But that's not like music related or performing related. Um, and that's, oh, that's, th th and that's another interesting thing. It's like, you know, because I've had a few people like reach out and they're like, Hey, we'd love for you to come and perform. And, and even like, I remember like the first time the first person reached out to me and I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't do it because you know, I'm, I'm taking a bit of a hiatus. And like, there's a part of me that kind of felt guilty for, for saying that, like that, that I'm taking a hiatus. And why do you think that was, I mean, I think part of it is just like my nature. Like I'm, I'm just one of those people who like, I say yes to almost everything. And so I think it, it was part of like part of it is just that like me saying no I felt like eh, maybe I should cater to them and like what they want and what they need and but it's become a lot easier now like I think I've worked with the whole idea um enough for it to like to, you know it's like sunk into my my being now that this is what we're doing and that we're completely okay with this and I don't need to apologize to or feel even feel bad that I'm not going to sing or I don't know, do interviews or things like that. And that feels liberating in and of itself. Well, thank you. Thank you for breaking out of the hiatus for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, and, and it, the thing is like a lot of it, it's like there, you know, there are a few that I'll say yes to, but for the most part, it's like, what's the purpose? Because I think like the other thing too, is just like with last year, it's like I, I said yes to so many events, invitations, the interviews and all that stuff. And I, and I was necessary but it's like, now I'm just like, okay, like, what's the purpose of this? Like, what is this going to do? And I, and I knew like for this, like having this interview was for me, was, is also about being able to continue clarifying for myself, like what, you know, cause I knew like this was probably going to be part of our conversation. Yeah. So this was a way for me to like continue solidifying this idea. And well, let's talk a little, let's talk a little more about this. Cause because before we started recording, you were mentioning discovering this quote that kind of put all this in perspective. Yeah. So I'd seen a friend of mine had posted this quote a while back, uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And it just, it, it's like that thing you see and you're like, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for to, in a way, almost kind of give me permission to do what I want to do. And it was a Nelson Mandela quote. And it basically says, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. And for me, it felt like whether it's just last year, or like the last five years of my music career has been constantly trying to, to climb all these hills to find my own success and to find my own place as an artist and all those things as a mother. And, and after I read that quote, it was just like that sense of like, oh, OK, I can I'm sitting on this one right now, the one that I just finished climbing. And I'm looking out and thinking there's so many other hills I really want to climb. So what if I just decided to sit on this one for a bit? And just kind of, you know, sit in silence and be inspired from within and then strategically try to figure out how do I climb to the next hills? But for me, the key word, like the key thought being, how do I smartly get to the, to the other hills? Because I feel like I've done kind of a little bit of everything and some things have worked really well, some things haven't. And so it's like, okay, now how do I get, how do I kind of like move on to the next thing? But from a smart place, not, not so much like breaking my back and spending like 14, 15 working a day and oh man. We'll get back to the bravery at hand in a second. 
But I wanted to remind you that I first began having these conversations both on and off the podcast because I was curious about what bravery actually meant. If we could build it, if so, with what ingredients? And I was so curious, I turned my research and personal stories of experiences with feats of bravery into a book. That book is called Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous. And it's now available in multiple formats on Amazon right now. So go get yourself a copy of Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous. And after you read it, let me know what you think. So I have witnessed my other musical colleagues and other and non-musical colleagues too go through the the hustle Mm -hmm. and specifically with the music touring lifestyle that kind of thing there are some personality types that that pattern and that process of being in a different city every day yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) which for very many reasons, that is the most profitable slash for some people. It's the only way that you can make money on the road is to be in a different city every single day. Yeah. And for me and my personality type, I know I have seen like, I've, because I've witnessed, I've been on tour with some friends who were on that, like where we do, you know, 12 cities in 14 days kind of tour. And I get home from the tour. I didn't even play. It wasn't even my, you know, my gig. I was the merch girl mm-hmm. just helping out along for the ride just to see the sights, you know, yeah. just as kind of like a, a half vacay, you know, yeah, totally. which is so fun. But at the same time, I would come home. I came home from the, a couple of those thinking that that's not my speed. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> like, that is not my speed. And what I know about the music industry and what I know about this is that that speed is a, the most profitable speed. Yeah. So I know you, you asked like, what does this next season look, look like actually look like for me? It actually looks like doing a slower version of this tour stuff. Yeah. I mean, right now, because I make, I make my income, I am so I am, I'm self-employed full, full full-time. It's all just me. Right. Mm -hmm. But I am not solely making money off of just my music and just my performance alone. I'm making money off of helping people with their creative businesses and helping my friends learn how to put together a website that look, that actually makes the money, you know, or helping my tech startup friends learn how to communicate in the best way possible. So I'm have my like, paws in multiple pies, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did that on purpose because I knew that, you know, by having my paws in multiple pies, I'm now able to say, yeah, great. Let's do a national tour and take six months to do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like take breaks or spend a week in Santa Fe (laughs) in between hustle, you know, just writing blog posts for clients or writing articles or, you know, doing consultations and that kind of thing. So I came like before you and I spoke, I think I made that kind of connection around probably 2014, 2015. It was like post diagnosis for my hand. So I already knew that my life was going to look different. And I also knew that I had a physical limitation that if I was stressed my tremor gets bad. Mm. And knowing what I know about myself, if I were to go tour at the speed of the industry standards, that my hand would make it impossible for me to play and perform. Yeah. And you just like burn out real quick and you'd be done with your whole career in like within a year or something. Totally. Cause I'd get a name for being the, the chick that doesn't know how to play guitar, but still gets up on stage anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> when I, I'm not kidding. When my tremor gets bad, it is impossible for me to like, I have to get fully silent and like meditate and you can't tell an audience, hold on for just 15 minutes while yeah. I go sit in a silent room by myself. Like that just doesn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> so I just could see, I can, could see the signs and was like, I can't, 
I want to tour. I want to perform. I want to be a musician, but I want to do this in a sustainable way so that I can keep giving because I want to keep giving. I want to do this as long as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a flash in the pan. I don't want to, I want this to be a long thriving career. And sometimes that means you have to do things differently. Well, absolutely. And that's exactly what I I had the same idea too, of just like, I'm in this for the the long game, like not, you know, not interested in like being sort of like you're here for like two years and then people forget who you are. Like, I want my music to be around 50 years from now. And yes. And that means like you, you kind of, you know, strategize your own plan and, and then keep, keep adjusting it as, you know, as life happens and things happen and it becomes necessary to adjust those plans that still fit, you know, what your vision is. And right. Yeah. And to me, I think it's really powerful when you're able to, to like do that. Like you don't have somebody sort of in the back, barking at you and you know yeah demanding that you oh no you have to keep doing this well and it's for that reason that I really feel for the artists who have surrounded themselves with people who are encouraging them to do probably wise things just in general like general wise advice but poor advice for them personally yeah Mm -hmm. because you're right like all it takes is like one really convincing manager or one really convincing publicist for you to make decisions about your own career that aren't going to pan out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that, and I, I've like learned that lesson the really hard way. And, mm-hmm. and I think my take from it was, you know, again, it's like, I'm a very intuitive person. And for this one particular situation, like I didn't listen to what my gut was telling me and and it was, you know, and I realized later, I'm just like, oh, see, your gut knew this whole time. Like, <laughs> this was not going to end well. And it was not, in, it was not even going to be in your, in your best interest at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And that's why I've taken forever to like, to sign with anyone or, you know, because I, I just, I like, I, I value what I do so much and who I am, my soul, my spirit, that I want to, I want to join with people who, are in alignment with what my vision is and where I want to be and where I want to go. But yeah, but I, and I think the beauty of one of the beauties of being like a 21st century musician is, you know, with the technology and everything like that, I feel like it's given us more freedom to sort of carve our own paths, you know, and totally like there's no 20 years ago, like the whole label thing was the only way that you could make music, but now it's like, no, not really. Totally. I've talked about this moment before on the show and it's actually also in my book as well, but there was a moment at a music industry conference that happened several months ago. I was observing or in the audience watching this panel discussion happen. The title of the panel was everyone can make a record. No one can make money. Now what? Mm. And the entire panel discussion was just this downward spiraling, like, woe is us. Nothing's working. Nothing's, everything's awful. And I, in the book, I use this as an example of like my internal bravery was that I wanted to leave. (laughs) Like I made the choice to leave the room. And before I did that, I told a friend who's sitting next to me why I would just was like externally got brave and said, Hey, I don't agree with anything they're saying. This is making me feel really depressed and unnecessarily. Yeah. So I'm going to leave. And she said, no, stay, you need to speak up, you know, mirrored that external bravery back to me. Yeah. So I raised my hand and said, I disagree. And then it complete like 180 in an instant the entire vibration of the room changed and other people were raising their hands and saying how they'd also disagreed or the, how they could see that there was hope and progress and all this. And I mean, the bottom line is that I agree with you. Their technology has made it so that you can actually be an introvert and stay at home and play your music to people who might not have heard your music that day. Yeah. Otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to spend five hours in a stinky, smelly, beer infested bar in order to do it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think technology is actually going to empower a lot of artists. And this is just music, visual, poetic, you know, whatever arts you're in right now, technology it is going to be the thing that empowers you to do your career your way. Yeah, like actually own your career and yeah, make it what you want it to be and not have to follow mm-hmm. if somebody else's guidelines or somebody else's idea of like your career needs to go this way or, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So what have been some ideas that have been bubbling around? Cause I, I know me and I know that even if I was, had said, this is a season of rest, I'd still have like, Oh, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have there been some things that have popped up? There are definitely things that I've been thinking about. One is I would love to like the one thing that I've not done very well is networking with like people in the industry and just to like meet other people that are not performers. And, and so my, you know, one of the th- things I've thought about is like that I'd love to go and do these music conferences and stuff like that, that just like can kind of see things from that angle. And because I feel like I've been holding being like a one woman show from writing to creating my own albums and all that stuff. And so I want to observe things from the other angle. So that's one thing I've really thought about. And then just, you know, kind of also doing like some sort of like my own personal development, going on retreats and like as a way to like nourish my soul and my spirit. And yeah, so the, like those are the two things that I, that, yeah. you know, that I have on, like that I've already kind of like penciled in that I'd love to, like that I'd love to do. And, but also kind of like, and you know, and I love what you talked about, like technology that you don't have to leave your home. You know, I've even thought about just like maybe once a week kind of doing like just one song and just asking people like, if you have a favorite song, I can do like a live thing on Instagram or something like that. And well, I also know you have a lot of global fans yeah. as well, more, more than me personally, but you could totally have like an online concert timing schedule so that you do like a 9am West coast concert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that everyone in Europe and in that part of the world and that part of time zone can watch you after they get off of work, you know? Exactly. Which I think is, that's so cool that, that people so far away can partake in what you're doing from your home in a very different part of the world. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so that's, that, that's something I just started thinking about that like yesterday. So I'm not fully like formulated, but yeah, but I think everything, I feel like everything I want to do this year, or at least not for the next few months, I don't know how long like this silence is going to be, but, but I think it's just more about like feeding myself and feeding my soul and, and then just seeing what comes off. Cause you know, to me, I feel like w- when you're able to feed your soul, like inspiration just flows naturally and, and just curious to see what kinds of songs will come out of. Yeah. And I think too, just because of everything that's happening in the world, like I just feel like it's, it's just essential to kind of pull back a little bit. And I feel like there's just so many things happening at the same time that it just becomes really overwhelming. And for a person like me, who's also an empath, like I've had to just, you know, really log on to Facebook anymore just because every time I just feel so gross, like, so just, just my whole body would just be like, yeah, what just happened? Like we just spent like 30 minutes there. And it's like, I feel like I need to like give my whole body a scrub, you know, from, just right. all the madness and all the crazy things happening. And Pro tip from me to you, there's this Chrome plugin called Newsfeed Eradicator. Oh. And it will replace your newsfeed with a motivational quote. Really? What's it called again? Newsfeed Eradicator. Okay. All right. And it's a, it's a Chrome plugin. It has saved my butt this last season because... I still have this like trigger impulse that if I forget what I'm doing on a online or whatever, my impulse is to just go check Facebook. Cause that must've been what I was going, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's been fantastic. Totally fantastic. Okay. All right. It doesn't work on your phone, of course. Yeah. But I, yeah, still. that's fine. Cause I mean, I actually deleted Facebook and from my phone. So that's, I'm going to definitely put that on. Cause yeah, it's very helpful. Cause I mean, you know, for a career that require that really does require you to be online and on social media, it makes it really difficult when you're so, 
somebody like you and I who need to not be on it all the stinking all the time. time. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's on the house. <laughs> okay. Well, so to wrap things up, I mean, this has just, first of all, been fantastic. But I want to ask you specifically, you know, so when I reached out to you, first of all, what, a year and a half ago when we first started the podcast, Mm -hmm. you and a couple other people were on the top of my list of like personal people I knew who I were, who were just heroes of mine. And from that list, there has been this resonant ripple effect of people introducing other people to me and other brave people to those brave people. And so, and then this community has built and through the process of doing all this research about bravery, the book has finished and the book is out now. And it's been so neat to, yeah. And it's been so neat to witness that whole process. Obviously I was an active part of making it happen, but it was, I was also witnessing it unfold as well. And I'm curious, since we've talked a year and a half ago, what have you learned about bravery? Oh, that's a really good question. Because I've learned a, I've learned a ton. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm thinking like there's quite a few things I've learned actually. Yeah. But I think for me, the one, I mean, I feel like this definitely applies with where I am in, in life right now. I think there's a lot of bravery in stopping what you're really good at to get better direction of where you need to go. Cause I think it takes a lot of courage to just say, you know, I'm good at this. And I, and I know that it, it, it has had a great impact on a lot of people, but I'm going to stop and believe that, that it's going to continue in one way or the other. I just don't know exactly how it's going to continue. Yeah. I think, I feel like that, that's what I'm learning right now about bravery is, is being able to stop and, and just having faith that, that this is a calling, that it's it's not just a fun thing, that it's it's a calling. And for me, this idea that the one who called me to this, that gave me this, does not, you know, just issue things randomly. Like there's a purpose and there's a reason. And like, and until that purpose and reason are accomplished, then I'll still be doing this for, for a long time. So Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen to that. <laughs> Oh, I just love you so much, Naomi. Oh, thank you, Emily. I love you too. I appreciate that. I appreciate, like, this has been so good for my soul. Oh, good. Yeah, because it's allowed me to, I think, say things, so many things that I think I've just been keeping in my brain and trying to, like, move around, you know, and... Oh, yeah. That's what this last year and a half has been (laughs) for me. It's just been a whole year and a half of me just, like, talking things out with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then finally you're like, ah, okay, now I get it. Now it's nice making sense. But- yeah. And it's been actually interesting in the book writing process. I got to a point about six months in after about six months into the podcast, I had to take a break from the book creating process because I realized if I keep in the creation element of the book, that I won't actually be listening to all the good things that are, that I'm learning. Yeah. through this, just interviewing everyone, just research, research, research. And I was right. Like a year into the podcast, all of these like, oh, there are 12 ingredients. Oh, there's three reasons why people are brave. Oh, there's like all of these truths started blooming. And I had I just pushed publish right away, I would never have come up with those or I would have never discovered those things because yeah. the seeds themselves hadn't germinated yet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> okay. Your brave takeaway from today's show is to get silent five minutes, 50 minutes. It doesn't matter. I want you to take a pause, sit in the noise and listen really deeply. And I want you to sense your external surroundings and feel for your internal landscape soak in the silence, and then I want you to write any observations that come up. Plain and simple as that. Be silent, listen, and then write what comes up. If you are in a sharing mood, you can go ahead and pop all the writing and all of the things that you uncovered into the Bare Naked Bravery Facebook group and let us know what you observed. 
If you are not yet a member of the Bare Naked Bravery community, we would love to have you, of course. Your goodies for membership, your membership goodies are available by going to emilyannpeterson.com forward slash join. And you've got like a five day bravery challenge and some coloring book to download and some music to download, all sorts of fun stuff, as well as the link to check out the Facebook group. You can find Naomi Washira and myself on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the other places. Go ahead and tag us so that we can cheer you on and see what you're up to, because that would would be awesome. That is our show this week. Thank you so much for listening. Again, we have put all of the links in the show notes for today's episode, so be sure to visit us online for all of that. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode, leave a review on iTunes. That's the way to do it. Or share, or just, just directly tell somebody about the show. That's actually like super, super effective. (laughs) If you are digging the music in today's episode, that's because it's brought to you by Lee Rosevere. You can find out more about all the artists and musicians of the show by going to barenakedbravery.com forward slash sponsors. And reminder, this next upcoming workshop, this next upcoming masterclass is going to be really, 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 really good. How to find your confidence without bullshitting yourself. (laughs) I'm not going to be able to say that workshop title without laughing. I guess cussing just makes me giggle. So, so soon. <laughs> um, we would love to have you in that workshop. So go to emilyannpeterson.com forward slash workshops, or you can check out my Instagram and I'm pretty sure that a link to go register for that class will be on my bio. So, um, next week. We have so many good things for you in store. I'm so excited. But until then, and until I see you in class, I have one message for you. Like this. Be yourself. Be vulnerable. Be imaginative. Be improvisational. Because the world needs more of your bare naked bravery.